Alright, in Manchester, walking east, east on Bridge Street. It's probably about 5.15 p.m. Happened to see some road pirate activity, so I thought I'd come up here, document, maybe try to introduce into the conversation a question of where the victim or who the aggressors are. Manchester Road Pirate Vehicle 634, Space 24. So the car is making it around now. Was there a victim tonight? Was there a victim tonight? What? Is there a reason why you stopped this person? There is. I've explained it to him, sir. Did his actions cause a victim? Sir, don't interfere when I'm on this car stop right now. I'm going to be approaching him to talk to him. If you want to talk to me, I'll talk to you in one second, okay? Do you have a minute to talk? Sure. The road pirate vehicle is facing west right now, just parallel to Bridge Street. There's another police employee right there. Maybe he's radioed his colleagues. I'm not sure. How you doing, sir? I'm doing well. How you doing? Good. Cool. Yeah, I just uh, I don't need to burn up your time or anything, but. Uh, you know, if I see some, like, outside a bar, folks are, like, about, like, escalating a situation, you know, if possible, I try to defuse it. Okay. And I just, uh, you know, I don't know the con situation there at all, but I just saw that, you know, you had stopped him. And so I just was curious if you could uh, explain to me if there was a victim, that why he was stopped. Why yeah, it was his... a motor vehicle violation, that's all. Okay. Um, I mean, it's so it's just, like, he maybe uh, didn't... Uh, act according to some text on paper, but to if, the motor vehicle law, correct? Right, but there was no actual victim. Well, the state's the victim. And who's the state? Can I talk to the state? Yeah, if you'd love to uh, call the Department of, Mo Department of Motor Vehicle, I'm sure they could direct you in the, the right direction for that. But eventually, someone's going to answer the phone and say, "I'm the state, and I was victimized by that." Okay, action. well, it, I guess if you're going to, the semantics on the law, like I said, I enforce it. If you want to talk to the people that write that, you can um, talk to the people up in Concord, but. As far as until that changes, unfortunately, that's the way things got to go. Yeah, I understand uh, that sort of perspective, but I guess I would offer a different perspective and just maybe see if you consider it, which, which would be, you know, it doesn't matter what folks put on paper, but if it's if it's not right for me to do, it's not right for someone with a badge to do, would you, like, because if right there you just stopped them because of what someone else did, just whether you would... No, he, he did it. He committed right. a motor vehicle violation. Mm -hmm. But... I guess what I'm saying is, so you're saying you you, you initiated a stop because Correct, he, he violated some legalese, someone had put on paper, but uh, I guess why would you give that legal, why would you give that text any more like credence than text someone else puts on paper? I, I don't understand what you're saying. I'm trying to uh, ask you to define like who the state, what the state is. Like, well, what? it's a law. It was passed through the legislation. They determined that what he did, he committed a motor vehicle violation. The state has a set fine for what he did, and that's what he. So that's why it is. Yeah, I'm just it's curious. It is. So you would enforce whatever was put and said to be at that, a similar. That that's what the, the police do. We enforce the laws that are on the books. So that's what we do. How you doing? Um, yeah, I guess I'm just trying to talk to you as an individual, not say the police in general or this. It's individuals who act, not like the Manchester Police Department, you know. And so I'm just curious, you know, you're ch right there choosing to to stop someone's freedom of movement based on text that someone else... Well, it's a law. It's a motor vehicle law. It's well, what he, he committed a violation. I get, I'm, I'm not going to debate the semantics with you, and it seems like that's where you're going, so I've explained it to you. Um, obviously, we... We have a difference of opinions on that. So if that's all we're going to do is debate opinions. Yeah, I agree. That's pretty much all I want. Just want to broach that idea. I appreciate you taking the time. And right, if so I could get y'all's names. Uh, my yep, name's... My last name is Gravel. Gravel and Pete. Yeah. Yep. I can't shake your okay. <laughs> What's? Can I get your name, sir? Hearn. Hearn? 509. 509, thank you. So it's always good to just continue recording as you leave a scene in case someone tries to roll up on you. As with most encounters of this nature, there tends to be room for improvement. 
in retrospect, there were three things that I think I should have done different. Uh, the first being, when I initially arrived on the scene, I should have told the person stop that I was there for their safety. That would uh, vocalize my intentions to him and to the person who stopped them and any passerbys. Uh, second, I should have been more succinct in my own dialogue in the conversation that I had with Gravel. That would, um, you know, maybe make my points more clear and not as um, obtuse. And third, I would should have paused a little bit more frequently in that conversation with Gravel, uh, the hope being that his own responses would then maybe sink in a bit more, you know, him saying that I, will, I would enforce it and without thinking about what he is choosing to act upon. Certainly this brief interaction wasn't glamorous or shocking, but I do think it worthwhile, if for nothing else, to hopefully plant a seed or share an idea with Gravel. Uh, maybe in his downtime or between calls, when it's slow, he thinks about the conversation and most specifically about the point of him choosing to enforce whatever some other strangers put on paper. You know, maybe he will see and realize that, hey, despite taking a paycheck to supposedly serve and protect people, more often than not, he is engaged in the business of oppressing people. And if he truly does care about helping his neighbors, maybe he will seek alternative employment that is uh, more peaceful and productive. And if Mr. Gravel or any other police employees are watching this piece of content, I encourage you to visit copblock.org slash welcome leos, as well as watch the excellent video called The Chain of Obedience by Storm Clouds Gathering. And again, I share this message not out of hate, but out of love. I very much could have been in the same situation as Gravel, as a police employee. That was the track I was going for uh, some years ago. But, uh, and I realized the amount of conditioning that goes on in government schools and in the academies and once you uh, were to get into that job. So I just want to really encourage you to think about your own actions and um, don't conflate the I to be we, as in the state or Manchester police or whatever. Think about your own actions and how you treat people, how your salary is paid, and whether that is truly serving and protecting.